welcome to another episode of Crazy Fitness Guy, Healthy Living Podcast slash Weekly Motivation with Crazy Fitness Guy. Just an FYI, sorry for my voice sounding like crap, but I've been feeling under the weather. Uh, I don't know if it's allergies or cold or a mix of both. Yeah, I don't have a runny nose. I don't have a fever. So I don't know. Maybe Mother Nature just hates me. Screw Mother Nature. Anyway, uh, before we get started with the show, uh, but I know how to, to live stream anymore. Uh, if you want to follow me on uh, social media, you can follow me at Jimmy Claire Speaker on Facebook and Instagram, and Jimmy Claire Speak on Twitter. And you can uh, follow Crazy Fitness Guy at Crazy Fitness Guy at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And See, look, there's Instagram on the screen. Uh, you can watch this weekly live stream, uh, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram, as I promised I was going to put it in eventually. <laughs> and once this episode go, can, will go live, uh, you, I mean, on the podcast platform, uh, you can listen to it on Apple, Google, and Spotify. And yes, I just changed my hosting company today. Don't ask why. That's a long story for another time, uh, and I'm not going to do a long story. And f if you want to help support the show and uh, keep the show up and running and Crazy Fitness Guy up and running, uh, consider subscribing to the uh, Crazy Fitness Guy Premium Podcast. Get behind-the-scenes access, listen ad-free, and so much more. Subscribe for only $5 a month or... Twenty dollars a year, and last but not least, uh, do you get tired of boring podcasting apps that the only thing you get to do is listen to podcasts and and just uh, download them, and then it just automatically deletes, or you just delete it on your own? Well, with Cleaver.fm, you can comment on the sh our show, highlight your favorite parts of the show. And so much more. Visit Cleaver.fm, download the app, and subscribe to Crazy Business Guy podcast on the uh, on Cleaver.fm. And make sure you you uh, subscribe to the show because in two weeks the founder is coming on from Cleaver.fm right here live on this show to learn more about their product and services. So with that being further ado. Uh, if you have you ever wondered how to power up your brain and to achieve everything you want in life, well, today is the day to learn how with my friend Rena Lang. Hey, Rena. That bed behind you looks so comfortable. Are you sure you don't need a nap? <laughs> I would like a nap, maybe. <laughs> uh, Thank you so much for having me. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, so before we get started, can you tell people a little bit about who you are, what you do, and how you got started? Sure. So I'm a mind and brain power coach. And how this co came about, how did I become a mind and brain power coach is uh, my background is in consulting. So I'm an achiever. I got degrees, master's degrees, you name it. And I was on top of the world a few years ago and I landed my dream job, was making the money I wanted to make. And then my mind and brain started breaking down. So I would go into meetings and I would have listen to conversations and I would walk out of those meetings and I was no longer able to remember what was discussed. So I started recording conversations on the phone and doing all kinds of other things. I was procrastinating a lot. I was really, I felt like my head was stuck in a fishbowl for a long time. So many people, they think, you know, it's kind of like a normal way of doing things. You smarten up as you're, you know, as you're growing up. And then sometimes your intelligence plateaus in your 20s, 30s. And then maybe in your 40s, things kind of start dwindling. You know, there is a bit of mental deterioration settling in. And but it's just a normal way of doing things. So to me, it happened in my early 30s, and I didn't have the luxury of just waiting, okay, maybe maybe it happens to me when I'm 60, and then it's just a normal way of doing things. I had another life to live, 
And so I had to learn ways and tools and tricks to actually turn things around for myself, to not only make myself to heal my mind and my brain, so that I can could go back to my normal, usual levels of intelligence. But on top of that, as a side effect, it's been now a couple of years, what I realized, not only that I was able to heal my mind and brain and turn things around, I'm actually, I'm actually smarter than I ever was. And this is what I'm passionate about um, when it comes to like sharing this message, introducing this idea to people that don't buy into that belief that, you know, there is some sort of a, an arch that we are going through when it comes to our intelligence. Not only can you still continue becoming smart and smart as you grow older, but if there is already certain mental deterioration that has settled in, things can be turned around. So as you know, you know, like the real pandemic that we're going through right now is just this whole like minds breaking down after a certain age when we are the most wise, most experienced, when we are just about ready to start contributing to the tapestry of life and to the intelligence of humanity. People start forgetting they rely too much on the post-its and things like that. So this is something that I, I would like to kind of like in, educate people about how to reverse those things so that they can have the same experience as I've had and and really realize, oh my God, my intelligence keeps growing and I can keep unlocking, keep unleashing it. There is no limit to how far I can go. And we all admire intelligent people. We admire brilliant minds. We just never think that this is possible for us because we didn't win the lottery of, of life to have a brilliant mind. But then actually what other people can do, it just shows us human potential. What others, other people can do, we can do too. How? The question is how, of course. That's when I come in. So, uh, so, why, uh, so why do people get these uh, thoughts that they uh, can't do so, these kind of things? Like, you know... I always thought, you know, sometimes I thought maybe I'm kind of like, oh, am I meant to be on the screen? Am I meant to be live streaming? Even though these days I feel like I'm totally overwhelmed with having to stay on top of everything. I was like, I just keep showing up. I keep on talking about what I do and what not to, and why I do it. So I must like it if I can't stop talking about it. Uh, but why do these people get these thoughts? So first off, we think intelligence is knowing things. It's accumulating knowledge and how easily and fast we can recall that information again. Many people equate that to intelligence. That's not intelligence. That's intellect at most. And as we get, get older, there's just so much information accumulated and it's stored somewhere you agree it's stored somewhere in our energy body in the brain you name it whatever it is that you believe where it's stored but basically as we get older we accumulate more and more of that and we're holding to all of that energetically and our brain this magnificent tool that we have that organ all it does is reading all of that information that you have floating around in your energy tank and of course, as you grow older, it's becoming overwhelming because there is just too much. It's not too uh, more information that we need. We need actually less information. Keep what is useful and let go of what we don't need. I think most people are already familiar with the concept of energies, right? You are a podcast host, so you're constantly interacting with other people. You're actually exchanging energies with that person guess what you're keeping that energy in your energy field and your brain is trying to read that energy too it takes it on as if it was yours and eventually at some point your cup is full and the brain is really trying hard to still process it but how much of that energy do you actually need so one way of checking in is for instance now you're sick if you were to close your eyes and you, you can't even pinpoint what is making you sick, what symptoms there are, you're just feeling like maybe drained. So if you were to check in with yourself and close your eyes, play with me, close your eyes and check in how much of that heavy energy that is making you sick 
is actually yours? Put a percentage on it. Probably like maybe like 60%. It's not yours, which is, but you're carrying it. So what you can do is you can just close your eyes, generate a feeling of free fall. Play with me. Generate a feeling of free fall in your body. Just relax, relax. And tell those that 60% of energy to just leave your body now. It has no place space business of being in your energy field. Just relax into it, completely let go. Don't hold on to it. Thank that in energy for being there and send it back to whoever you picked it up. So any person that is interacting a lot with other people should do this technique. Do it every day before sleep. Whenever you're feeling overwhelmed by an emotion, a thought, an energy, chances are it's not yours because whatever is yours, whatever is left, those 40% you can actually deal with. And that's how you're going to start cleaning up your energy field. One thing that you can also do is kind of like affirmation, right? Start affirming um, this releasing statement. I release taking on what is not mine. This is one of the tools, simple tools that I teach to start decluttering your energy field of everything that is not belonging to you. Because your body is struggling to process it all. But it's not yours. You don't know who you were talking to last week. Maybe it's somebody with cancer. But you were in each other's spaces. You were in each other's energy. Who knows what you picked up? So do this energy, do this technique every single day before sleep. Or every time you finish a conversation with someone, give back that person whatever it belongs to them. Don't take it on. And so when you're saying about like, you don't even know whether you're, you're enjoying it. Well, you show up, so you must be enjoying it. Well, the thing is this. Probably you need a break. Another thing is that um, why are we here in the first place on this planet? To me, I'm, I'm creating something, and then I'm experiencing whatever I'm creating. Like, you and I, we are in the process of creation. We are creating this conversation. And so it's about experiencing whatever you're creating and figuring out, am I enjoying it? And how, 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 if, you, if you're still enjoying it, continue with that because every single person, every single conversation is a different creation. But ultimately, it's all about experiences, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, I can tell you one thing I'm not enjoying. Uh, I'm not going to name any names, but uh, yeah, I'm... I'm I'm, I'm kind of just, I'm just kind of bummed out. Uh, I, I've been just kind of bummed out about learning stuff in college at the moment, just because I don't feel like I'm getting much out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so but there are certain things that we need to do, you know, to get out of the way, to ch check the boxes, you know. Like definitely when I was, that's one of the things that actually led me, my mind to me to that state where my mind was breaking down is because there are certain things society expects us to do, such as finishing college, such as finishing university, you know, and, and getting certain degrees because they're open doors. And in the, in the process of actually acquiring those degrees, because people promise me, if you get that degree, you're going to be happy. If you get that job, you're going to be happy. If you do this podcast and meet all these people, you're going to be happy. So for a long, long time, the only thing I was asking of the universe is, can I please be happy? And then I realized that actually following all those like, do this, do that, marry, get a house, get, get a family, all those things weren't actually leading me truly to my happiness. But I don't regret it because I checked, checked those boxes and now it's serving me to, to an extent still. It's all, it opened doors for me, but also gave me structure, right? It gave me structure and it, it, the feeling of accomplishing something. Because when we kind of transition from childhood to adulthood, we don't have many accomplishments yet. And this is one of them. And as you then move on and, and start building your own business, for instance, this is an accomplishment that you can build on. I don't know if this is answering your question, but you know, try to see the bright side of it 
the thing is this this is when I was also in corporate and I was doing you know tasks and jobs that I really didn't enjoy. I made sure that I find something in the day that I do enjoy. I make it my servant. I made it my servant. It has to serve me. So long as I'm stuck here for the next two years, I have to find something that's going to serve me. So I don't know how much you have left of your college time. Really think how it serves you. What can you get out of it? How can you make it your, your servant? Let's put it that way. In the greater scheme of things that you're trying to do. I'm sure there has to be some bright sides. I got to meet some professors who I probably wouldn't ever meet without going to college, but, uh, and a lot of them has helped me to get to where I am today. But, uh, yeah, there are some days I ask myself, why am I taking this class or course or whatever? Because it, as it, sometimes I just feel like, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Everything is just a big mess. And just trying to keep track of the due dates on certain things as a cluster. You see, suffering is, is fighting with what is. Suffering is fighting with the reality. The reality is you are taking the courses. The reality is you are going to the university. The reality is you are working on your essays, projects, whatever it is. So it's suffering is really when you are fighting with that reality and thinking your reality should be something else. Probably one of the major, major um, kind of like aha moments and turnarounds that I had over the last years and what made me ultimately the happiest person I know now is stop fighting with what is. And of course, it's kind of like hard to, to, to know, like, how, how do you do it? I used to be similar to you. I always thought I'm sitting at the wrong table. I always thought I'm doing the wrong thing. Like, why am I, why am I, why life did put me in this place? Why am I here sitting between these two old ladies, whereas I should be sitting at that other table where the cool kids are? But then actually like letting go of that resistance of being where I am. Okay, the life put me into this spot between these two old ladies for whatever reason. So maybe they have a message for me. Maybe I should talk to them. Maybe they have something for me because there are no coincidences. So if life puts you into that place, doing exactly that thing that you're doing, so at some point you've chosen it and this is the place for, best place for you to be. The question is why? Start, start treasure hunting. Why do you have to be here? Why do you have to be at this moment, at this point of time, on this planet, in this country, in that place, in that university, surrounded by these this people? Why? One, one, one mantra, little mantra that I was used to use when I was feeling like, like completely lost and completely drained and completely like wanting to throw a towel and leave is it is what it is focus on the now and it's like taking one step at a time one breath at a time just bring yourself more and more into here and now and that's again kind of like the conversations perhaps that you're having with people and some of them are more successful than you some of them are somewhere completely different and being dragged into all those, those people's different realities makes you doubt probably your own reality. It makes you maybe feel like, oh, that person is doing something way cooler than I'm doing. Well, they're supposed to inspire. You're not supposed to live their life. You should, you're not supposed to trade your life for their lives. I'm sure they've been where you are and they've gone through shitty, shitty life uh, periods. But it's you're already more kind of like, ahead of a lot of people at your age probably a lot of your peers you get inspired you talk to all those different people it gives you give you ideas but you cannot run until you learn to walk and i agree foundations, and building foundations is very very important and education is a foundation that ultimately you build on and certainly for me you know it opened doors for me connections 
but more than anything, foundation on which I can actually start build. I was able to do my business. And how did you? Uh, so, what, what are some of the other techniques people can uh, do to power up their brain? So, first off, thank you for bringing the conversation back to the topic. First off, um, clean up your mind and clutter your mind. One of the effective ways of doing it is actually start journaling. Start journaling. All that energy that is sitting in your energy field, even the energy that you picked up from other people, it can only stay in your energy field if it finds something of similar quality that it can attach itself to. So you cannot absorb other person's anger if you don't have your own brand of anger in you, things like that. So basically, it's about really knowing thyself and exploring your mind. To me, this 21st century is going to be that. This is the mind and brain hacking age. And this is the next frontier. And lucky for every one of us here, we all have a mind. And it's a gold mind. You're the most interesting book you, you will ever read. Why not getting to know yourself a bit more? And that's where journaling comes in. I picked it up from a book called uh, The Artist's Way. And it's an excellent way for unleashing and unlocking creativity and intu in intuition. It's actually going within more and more and writing from that space. It's not about like journaling in the sense of I did this, I did that throughout the day. It's checking in with your own inner world. Like you are sick right now. Why not sit down and spend 15 minutes? Okay, how does it feel? What kind of energy is it that this, this energy of, of that you feel? Does it have a story? It doesn't want to tell you something and start writing from that place and space. I've been journaling for the last two years. Actually, I've been journaling all my life, but in this particular manner for the last two years. And for the first six months, I was just bitching about the world, literally. The, the sky is too blue, the sun is too round, you name it. So it was just me complaining, like fighting with what is, fighting with my own reality. But then the more I was writing, and it's literally, it's like, your, our mind is like a room with a huge pile of clothes, all kind of like there, right? And so by writing, you actually take one piece of cloth at a time and look at it. What story do you have? They are not your enemies. Your emotions are not your enemies. Your thoughts are not enemies. They're just there to tell you their story, where your boundaries were trespassed, where something happened to you against your will. It, it where something wasn't sitting with, right with you. And it's by looking at that energy, it will allow you to see more and more where is the beginning of that energy because what you're angry with about is not really what you're angry about. It's just like the symptom of something, but you need to dig deeper to actually identify the root cause of it. And by identifying the root cause of it, you can actually free up that energy and let it go. You get to choose whether you keep that energy or you let it go completely because it no longer serves you. And what I realized is that one of the side effects of cleaning up your mind this way, like writing it out, giving it a voice, listening, getting the insights, getting to the bottom of it, you actually organize your mind at the same time. I was, list I was watching this documentary the other day about people who have incredible memories. And one of, the, one of the side effects of those incredible memories that they have is that they're extremely organized in their lives. Not like OCD type of organized, just everything has an order and structure to them. And this is a reflection of their minds. If you are someone who's listening to this and your desk is a mess, your back is a mess, everything is a mess, your life is a mess, it's a reflection of your mind. It's all those hundred bees shouting at you all the time and you're just like you jumping from one thing to another by organizing cleaning up your mind this that way would be me. yes exactly so which means that by going about cleaning up your room you're not really organizing your mind it has to happen the other way around in an organized mind it's so much easier to find information and that's what's going to improve your memory because memory, what does it do? It 
it's those circuits that find the right information that you put it somewhere there. But if it's like a chaos that's happening in your mind, it's very, very hard to find that unique information that you need. That's why our memory tends to deteriorate in time as we get older, because we just have so much crap, for the lack of a better word, in our minds. And it's not even useful. It's just dragging us down, making us sick, reducing our ability to cope with with the, all that additional information that's coming in because nothing is organized and it's a strain on the brain i i know that feeling because uh i have a lot of just some of these uh overdue tasks uh, and i started I think I think I lost you just for a sec. I have no idea what just happened. Yeah, so you're back. Great. What what did you say? I, I uh, did. Well, I know I for like for me, uh I know going uh, over spring break I started like two big tasks. Uh, they're not, I knew they weren't going to get done overnight or the next day or within the week. I knew it was going to take a while, but they've been just sitting in my mind over and over again, thinking, when do I have time to do this? When do I have time to do that? And... It's not a fun feeling, and there's like and, and if we're like and the, the other big the, the one of the tasks is to it is to uh, spruce up the show notes on my website, make it more make it a better description. Uh, it just because a short, very short description doesn't really tell anyone what's going to get out of the episode and whatnot. And then I was going to do that the same over on uh, my podcasting host, my my podcast host. And then it's also going to be on uh, on his uh, IMDb. And so I knew it was going to be a lot of different moving parts and whatnot. But um, just even saying it out loud, I'm like thinking, it's like this is going to be such a awesome task. And and I thought that was gonna just be it, and that was gonna be done. But then I got accepted to uh, I got accepted by this publication to write for, and uh, so I have like th that to finish. I have no idea what's going on. Anybody can send me right uh, to Comcast and tell them that they suck, period. Uh, and I really do mean that. Um, not to be un unprofessional, but if you, yeah, whatever, you know, I have a most terrible internet provider in the world. Uh, and, uh, but as I was saying, what, so I, I knew I, I just, I just my, my whole point is these thoughts and these projects have been taking up a lot of room in my mind. And on top of that, I'm going to school. On top of that, I'm writing two big articles for this publication. And it's like, I like this. I like having to be able to write to, for this publication. But when am I going to find the time to f finish up these other tasks that I have on um, my mind as I take in my, opinion, in my opinion, time is never the issue. It's really the energy. Do you have the energy to do it? And one way is uh, to free up space. I, I call it, you know, I'm a big fan of to-do lists. And I always have a to-do list. But actually, it's my idea list. It's not a to-do list to put myself on the pressure, under the pressure of doing things I have to do today. I have to accomplish this task. It's more like whenever I have an idea, I know I'll, I'll forget it or slip my mind. It's, it's almost like in, in Harry Potter, you know, whether you pull thoughts out and you pull it somewhere 
somewhere. So in this case, you put it on paper because that way there are not like 100 things shouting at you. You got to do me at some point. So what you might want to do is actually, I know not everybody's a big fan of to-do lists, but don't call it a to-do list. Call it an idea list. This is where all those ideas that are coming your way, all the different little things you need to do to improve things, just start pulling them out so that they stop shouting at you in your head. And that way you free up the space and place. And that it, this to-do list doesn't stress me at all. I have a lot of items. It excites me because there are a lot of items that I'm going to create. Once I get around to doing it, it's going to be awesome. But what I do today, or I'll do it in five weeks, I don't really care. So long as none of my ideas get lost. So perhaps you could you could also take this approach too and start freeing up, freeing up and removing those thoughts from you, getting them off the back. Uh, I do basically. I I do believe I do have a a, a idea list and my to do list tool. Uh, I use a digital one because I don't like paper. Mm -hmm. uh, my paper is definitely not organized. Uh, I back in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I have this desk, and and in this drawer, I have all these annoying files of health and 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 everything. And it's like I hate paper. And it's like and it's like of course when I signed up for my own bank account, they gave me a thing this freaking large. And it's like way to go, kill trees, amazing. And it's like we could have already done this on technology, signed it, done. I don't need the papers. And am whatever I going to take a look at them ever again? Yeah, nope. whatever works best for you, so long as tr start pulling those thoughts out and put it somewhere so that you don't have to stress that you're going to forget it or you're not going to do it or that while you're doing it, one thing, 100 other things are shouting you to do it. And that's perhaps the next tip that I can share at this point is that, you know, meditation is really an excellent way of cleaning up your mind. But it's not for everyone. I know a lot of people struggle and they go nuts, you know, just being alone with their, with their thoughts. But if you think about it, what is meditation? It's prolonged awareness and focus. So actually, when you work on that one project, time block. I time block all the time. So that this is like one hour and this is I'm doing and nothing else. And the alarm is going to ring. And, and then I'm going to move on to the next task. It's really the ability to, to focus on just one thing and nothing else. Like I'm doing this podcast with you. There is nothing else that distracts me, nothing else I need to do. However, many people can't do it. And it takes time to develop that ability. And one of the ways of doing it is our brains, our minds are meant to do way more, way more than we give them credit for so what you can start doing is actually, as you're listening to podcasts, audiobooks, replays, whatever it is, I seldom join live events these days. I, everything is replays. I installed my plugins on, on my computer, you know, on the Google Chrome and also on my phone where I can increase speed of anything that I'm consuming. I don't have three hours to watch a replay. I have three, I have one hour and I watch it at three, 3.5 speed, four times speed. I trained my mind to be so sharp and so focused that for me, it's not a problem listening to something that is so fast. Many people get overwhelmed. I say, well, it's been years in, in coming, you know. I started training myself by speeding up the, the, um, the, the audiobooks, right? 1.25, 1.5, 2.5. And then until my mind was able to so hone in on the information that is being presented that there is nothing else left for the mind to do. And that's much better for the recall memory and absorption of information. We are listening to things at a too slow speed. That's why our brains, our minds get distracted and they wander in all kinds of directions. And we recall even less. And we get tired, we get exhausted. Actually, I feel energized when I listen to something you know, instead of three hours in one hour, my mind is so on fire. And it, it's, you can start training yourself by doing that. And the same is like, um, you know, one of the side effects of that, of training myself to listen to and consume information that the fast, 
much faster rate, I actually started reading much, much faster than before. Again, it's the same thing with speed reading. We are reading way too fast, we get distracted. But by, by actually reading fast and honing in on that one thing, that one page, that one, one word, we are actually absorbing the information much, much better. And we can actually read and consume it so much faster. Another thing of what you can do is actually pace around, move your body as you're listening to some, something, get a good headset, you know, so that the, the, the audio is really, really excellent pace around, move your body, walk around in front of your computer. That way, more energy is actually being generated in the body, more energy is flowing to the brain. And, and again, it will help you to consume information faster, recall information faster and focus. That's one of the ways, um, I, I think one of the things that helped me the most to get to a place um, that I am now where I can, I'm really happy with how focused, laser focused I can be. And guess what? That is meditation already. You being able to listen to a podcast and being completely focused on what's being said is meditation. Reading is meditation. Working on what you, one task, time blocking, whatever you do, and completely be able to kind of like remove all that other noise. This is what matters now. This is what I'm doing. That's meditation too. That's why I use the Pomodoro timer uh, on my to-do list, too. Uh, I like to focus for 20 minutes at a clip. Uh, because some, even though sometimes I do go for an hour, I just like to have that break in between. Just so I can split it up. It's like, okay, it's not a full hour. I mean, technically it's a full hour, but it's like, okay, 20 minutes of work, 15-minute break, 20 minutes of work, Oh, look, it's around an hour. I got that break in between. Whatever well, works best for you. Because like sometimes if I sit there for a full hour, it, it, it can literally drag on and on. Like I, I feel like some, I feel like some of my college classes could have been just one hour, but they decided we're just going to add another forty-two minutes. And it's like, why? Just so we can talk about more and more and more and more that has nothing to do with the class. Cool. We, I, I don't need that. I was like, I, 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 this should be just be like a college that says classes for one hour. Done. No hour and thirty minute classes. Not two hour classes. Not two and a half hour classes. If I take a two and a half hour class, then I, then I then I need like a. a then I should get the rest of the week off. Screw it. I, I don't think I can help you with that. <laughs> Bummer. Uh, so, uh, how did you? It, it, so, if a, so, how did you uh, train? How did you get into all of this uh, mind hacking, so to speak? So yeah, so as mentioned, I had my mind was breaking down and I was, I, I had no choice. I had to do something about it because I was so young. And I decided to kind of like go with it and see what, what I can do. What, how can I help myself? And uh, one of my, my superpowers, if you want to call it, is that I, ever since I started meditating, I started feeling energies. And like my aura, my energies, like chakras, whatever you name it. I was just feeling suddenly all these things happening to me, which I had nothing to do before with. I, I was a consultant, you know, I was very practical. And then suddenly I'm feeling these energies ever since I started meditating. And, um, you know, usually when you talk about mental health, most people think about, you know, food, exercises, you know, speed reading, memory games. But I, I tried it before. And it didn't really help me because I really felt that my head was, was stuck in a fishbowl. So I couldn't really continue or persist with any of those solutions. And so I started learning and educating myself more and more about energies and chakras and the mind. What is the mind? That is an energy field. And I started realizing one of the things that I learned is that energies crystallize. They crystallize and harden after a while. And definitely it felt like hardened, conditioned energy to me. And so if you think about it, you know, the world doesn't change because people change. The world changes because people die. If you talk to people who are older 
sometimes you can perceive almost that, you know, kind of like they're stuck in their ways, stuck in their opinions. Whereas children, younger population, they usually are much more flexible. They're much more flexible in seeing other points of views and changing their opinions and changing their minds, being convinced. Or They're not really usually too attached to their opinions. That's why the world is the way it is, because too many people are so stuck up on opinions that is, aren't even there. They just sucked it in in, the, in their childhood 70 years ago, and now they're still running their life from that space and influencing the world from that space. And so that's what I was certainly feeling with myself, that there was so much conditioned energy. As mentioned before, you know, when I was in that place space for a long time, the only thing I was asking of the universe, can I please be happy because I was depressed on top of that. And now the only thing I ask of the universe is, can I please be free? And to me, freedom, it's not about physical freedom. It's about mental freedom, freedom from the thoughts that are not even my thoughts. How many thoughts a day are you thinking that are not your thoughts? That's why sometimes we think certain thoughts and feel like, this sounds like my mother talking, or this sounds like my father talking, this sounds like my teacher talking. We keep parroting after other people. And so that's why very few people actually on this planet who are truly thinking. Most people, they're not thinking, they're no, there is no original thought whatsoever. There is nothing that's inspiring, there's nothing groundbreaking. It's just repeating, she said this, he said that, and a lot of it is actually being wrapped up in our emotions. We think, we think, but it's just emotion smeared with a bit of thought on top of it. And that's what it is. And people live their lives out of that space. But actually, there's very, very little creative, interesting thought there, which is okay because all of us, we start where we start. And again, the emotion is not your enemy. It just wants to be healed. It just wants to be listened. Some things happen to us. That's why we have this like emotional holocaust happening in us. And it's very hard for us to polarize and rise our awareness and consciousness and move into that mental space of creating, of having interesting conversations, of, of you know, coming up with new ideas and really, really trying to kind of like impact the world because we're so wrapped up in our own, in our own pain, pains, hurts, resentments, whatever it is. And this is certainly that, that something that happened to me too. And I remember doing my, my first Vipassana uh, meditation retreat where I went for 10 days and I wasn't, we weren't allowed to speak or look other people in the eyes for 10 days. And when I really was left alone with my mind, I just realized how uninteresting most of my thoughts are. And they're, they aren't really mine in the first place. Or it's just about resentments, past, future, fears, and all that. So it's it, there was really not much that that I would have probably said I could have been proud of. Let's put it that way. And by having that realization, when I knew, okay, these are the contents of my energy body. This is my mind. Okay, what, what can I do about it? Well, clean up, remove, disintegrate, let go, release, give back, whatever it is that you need to do. It takes time to clean up, but once you clean up, the incredible mental abilities that you're going to start developing just by unleashing that additional energy and giving yourself that time, place, space. As they say in Buddhism, you know, real thought happens in an empty mind. And for a long time, I didn't understand this. Like, what do you mean empty mind? Like, how do you think in an empty mind? But now I do understand it. Because if our minds is like 100 people you know, being in a room and 100 people are shouting at you all the time, how can you have groundbreaking ideas that come from somewhere else? If you love reading biographies like I do, if you read biographies of very, very smart people, they almost always say that their groundbreaking ideas came from somewhere. Inspired, dreams, they woke up, they had the, the intuition, they had the, the, the idea just there but they seldom really attribute it to themselves. They just say it came from somewhere. Well, if an idea is about to come to you from somewhere, well, are you, are you gonna hear it? If you have 100 people shouting at you, are you gonna be, and if you hear it, are you gonna be able to really imp implement it accurately? Will you understand it correctly? And how, how will it be easy for you to actually differentiate it that 
unique one million dollar idea from all those other things that are shouting at you that's why we are wasting so much energy so much time we feel like we should be doing something bigger greater more meaningful there is that always nagging thought that we came here to do something bigger more important but we can't quite grasp what is it that we should be doing because the hundred things we could be doing because there are hundred things shouting at us do me think about me go with that yeah, exactly like it, it brought it kind of brings up uh a point that i uh, said to my mom the other day where she was where she was hammering like so many different th thoughts at me and I, I even had to ask her, I was like, am I still in college? And she's like, yes, you are still in college. And it's like, so why am I, th so why are you telling me I have to kind of have to think about uh, 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 house insurance, uh, health insurance, uh, car insurance? And it's like, I don't even have a car at the moment. Uh, I live with you guys at the moment. Uh, and it's like, why am I, I was like, if I'm out of college and I still don't have that stuff, then I'll start thinking about it. But I'm still in college. I didn't know that, that I'm in the future already. <laughs> so. Well, that's the thing. You know, if you cannot really hear your inner voice telling you what you should be doing, what you came here to do, and a lot of people struggle with that. They struggle with having a purpose. You know, when you ask, what is it that you want to do? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, guess what? If you don't make choices, decisions, that's what's happening with a lot of people. If you don't know, somebody else will try to think on your behalf or worse yet, you surrender that thinking to somebody else. Well, I don't know, maybe you know, but I guarantee you, if you surrender the thinking process to somebody else, the decision making process to somebody else, the choice process to somebody else, they will not make decisions in your favor. They'll make decisions out of their own conditioning. And it's all about really em empowering yourself again. Yes, I understand you have your parents. They're probably paying for your college and such. But I think they would actually really appreciate if you actually knew for sure what you want to do. And so long as you don't know, they'll keep coming with their suggestions. And um, and. That's disempowering, right? That's disempowering where you have, you end up fighting with them and such. So, and, and that's what a lot of people also go through. In the certainty, that's what I did. I thought everybody else knew what's best for me. They promised me, go to college, you're gonna be happy. Get the job, you're gonna be happy. I totally bought into it because they're older. They must know better than I, because I didn't have the awareness about what I should be doing with my life. And so I bought into all those decisions and again, I don't regret, no regrets in my world, but probably I, I could have saved myself a couple of years if I had known before I had that awareness or if I had cleaned up my mind before and had that awareness of like, okay, what is, what is it that I, in my soul, desire to do? What, did, what, what, how, how can I contribute to the tapestry of life? So perhaps by cleaning yourself up and knowing yourself more and more, it will help you make certain decisions that are in your favor, ultimately. Well, luckily for me, I already know what I want to do after college. <laughs> and I, I, just, I, I just get tired of sometimes my parents always say, just thinking, it's like, oh, well, you're going to have to think about these insurance, the, the different types of insurance. And it's like, but I'm not at that stage yet. And it's like, if I was at that stage, I'll be more than happy to go think about it. But you're, you're asking me, I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to throw out a number. Maybe it's another three or four years uh, well, in college. So why am I have to think about it right now while I'm in college? Well, if you think about it, most people on this planet, they function from that safety perspective. They need safety to function on this planet, in this world. I'm a traveler. I'm in Mexico now. I have never safety. The more safety I have, the more I resist it. I actually love adventure, not knowing what's going to happen to me tomorrow. So I totally I agree with you on the on the insurance side and, and all that. I still don't have insurances. What for? I, I see life as an adventure because, but this is what's working for me. But all the generations, because the world 
still actually is such an unsafe place. And many people really, they would trade everything and anything for safety. And that's where they're coming from because they think, well, only when you're safe, you can actually function. You can actually thrive. You can actually build something. Whereas perhaps your point is screw safety. Where's the adventure? Where's the cool stuff, crazy stuff I can be doing? And that's what motivates you. Safety stifles you perhaps, but safety for them, it's, it, it amplifies them. It opens them up. So these are kind of like different points of use. And if you follow Tony Robbins, I think he talks about them. There are like four things that motivate people. I don't know what the other things are. I just remembered mine, which is like adventure. But um, um, perhaps just understanding where people come from and what's ruling their world is probably a big difference. And perhaps this is something you can educate yourself about and share with your parents. That this is their worldview. That's what they need to survive. And your worldview is slightly different. Well, I think it's more along the lines is that I just like to live in the, I try to live in the present moment. It's fun to think what I'm going to be doing uh, out of college or while I'm in college. But I'm not thinking, yeah, I do think multiple steps ahead, but I don't think multiple years ahead. Uh, I, I think I'm up, uh, multiple steps like okay here's the next maybe three or four days plan for me <laughs> or what if I do from if I do something on this task what's left on a b c and d but I, I I'm just I don't want to look five years ahead and, and it's like oh I'm gonna I'm gonna have a house I'm gonna have my own family I'm gonna have insurance I don't know how I'm gonna pay for all this I'm like I'm still in college, and and so I, I can't think five years ahead. Uh, and it's like in my dream world, sure, but uh, I don't know. I'm just not at that stage yet. Yes, and you know, I also totally subscribe to the idea of if take care of today and tomorrow is going to take care of itself. So I'm also more like a day fly, and I enjoy the day and the moment and the here and now. And if there is one thing that life has taught me is that there is no safety in this planet, on this in this world. No matter what you do, no matter how many insurances you have, nothing is still going to save you from that track coming your way. So, and because I've been in so many situations in my life where I, you know, my life was on the line, and the only thing you can count on this is really your own mental strength and being in the moment, because you cannot never prevent. Truly, you can never prevent most things in life from happening. So that's what made me much more focused in the here and now. And maybe that's what you came to teach your parents. Who knows? And there is, and also it doesn't mean they're wrong. It also doesn't mean that we are right. It's just, again, it's different, different realities from which we function and what ultimately makes us happy. You know, planning five years ahead of time, um, something certainly doesn't, you know, doesn't, make me happy too much. So uh, before we wrap up, where can people find and learn more about who you are? Sure. So those of you who are interested in this topic, I just finished my little ebook on uh, about this topic, Mind and Brain Power, where I share more techniques, tools, insights about the mind and brain. And feel free to download it from my website, renalang.com slash ebook. So get it. There are also all my handles, social media, how to connect with me, my email address, you name it. Everything can be found there. I also have a YouTube channel. I also have my podcast. Check it out. There are also all the links to my YouTube channel and under that link, renalang.com slash ebook. And follow me. And I hope to get to know you better. Thank you so much for having me, Jimmy. Definitely. And uh, I hope you can come back on in the future so we can talk more about this because we probably only just scratched the surface. For sure, for sure. Of course, it's such an interesting topic. And anybody and everybody who's interested in, in hacking their minds, read the book, Stealing Fire. I highly advise you read the book, Stealing Fire. Um, when I read that book, it really opened my eyes to, wow, this is where the world is heading. And I've been doing it for years. And exploring your own mind is probably the greatest adventure you will, you will embark on. I'm definitely going to have to put that on my ring list. For sure. 
Oh, thanks again for coming on the, uh, our show. You're welcome. So that's all that we have time for today. And make sure you tune in next week because I got another show coming up that you don't want to miss. And in the meantime, if you want to follow me, you can go at, uh, follow me at Jim McClare Speaker on Facebook and Instagram at Jim McClare Speaker and Twitter at Jim McClare Speak. Make sure you follow Crazy Fitness Guy at Crazy Fitness Guy on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Crazy Fitness Guy. How many times do I have to say that? Uh, you can watch this live stream on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And once this episode goes live, you can listen to it on Apple, Google, and Spotify, and 100 plus other platforms. If you like the show and you want to help support us, uh, subscribe to the premium podcast to get behind the scenes access, listen ad free, and so much more. Only subscribe for five dollars a month or twenty dollars a year. And make sure you check out cleaver.fm to comment on our show, highlight your favorite parts of the show, and more with within your fa- within uh, the podcast app. Podcast does. Listen to podcasts doesn't have to be boring. It can be fun as well. So, in the meantime, stay healthy, stay safe, and stay motivated. Until next time, peace.